think you're pretty safe on land. What if I told you that every 39 seconds, someone somewhere gets hit by a cyber attack or that by the end of 2025, cybercrime is expected to cost the world a jaw-dropping $10.5 trillion? These aren't just abstract numbers. They are about real people and real businesses getting their lives and work completely flipped upside down. Too many of us are cruising along wrapped in a false sense of online security, believing means that frankly just make us easy targets for cyber criminals. These aren't harmless little mistakes, they're dangerous illusions. Today, we're going to smash those illusions. We're looking at the common cyber security means that are putting you, your personal stuff and maybe even your businesses in serious danger. If you've ever caught yourself thinking, nah, it won't happen to me or my basic setup is fine, then you really need to see this. Stick around as we uncover the truths you absolutely must know to get by this increasingly tricky digital world. Let's start with a big one. One of the most dangerous meets out there is another target. I'm too small, my data isn't that interesting. Hackers only go after the big fish, the giant corporations. Seriously? That's like leaving your front door wide open thinking burglars only eat mansions. The truth is, cyber criminals are often opportunists. They cast massive nets and guess what? Individuals and small businesses are often exactly who they're looking for. Why? Well, you're probably more likely to have wicked security than a massive company with a whole IT security army and a giant budget. Automated attacks like phishing scams or ransomware don't care how much money is in your bank account or how big your company is. They are built to catch anyone with an internet connection who has a moment of weakness. And think about this, your personal data, your logins, bank details, even private photos and messages, it's all valuable on the dark web. Data collection is a massive industry and hackers can use your compromised account to pretend to be you scamming your friends and family. For small businesses, it can even be worse. According to Verizon's 2024 data breach investigation report, a data breach for a small business can cost anywhere from $120,000 to $1.24 million. For many, an attack isn't just a pain, it's a knockout blow. In fact, something like 60% of small businesses shut down within six months of a major cyber attack. So thinking you're not a target, that's not just wrong. It's practically rolling out the welcome mat. Everyone's a target. The real deal is that being proactive about your defense is crucial for everyone, no matter how big or small you think you are. All right, next up, the classic. I've got antivirus software installed, so I'm totally covered, right? It's a comforting thought, isn't it? That one piece of software is, a, is your digital bodyguard. And look, antivirus software is important. It's a key part of your security, but relying on it that's like thinking a seatbelt is all you need to survive any kind of car crash. Antivirus programs are mostly built to spot and stop known threats, viruses, trojans and malware they've seen before and have a signature for. The catch, cyber criminals are always hooking up new schemes. We're, we're talking hundreds of thousands of new malware samples popping up every day and in late 2024, an average of 115 new vulnerabilities were being discovered daily. Today, cyber attacks are often more clever than simple virus. They use things like zero-day exploits, which go after security holes that even the software makers don't know about yet. And then, their social, their social engineering, which doesn't mess with your software at all, it messes with you. Phishing emails, for instance, trick you into happily adding over login details or downloading nasty files. No antivirus can stop you from clicking the convincing but bogus link. In 2024, phishing attacks were involved in almost 30% of all breaches worldwide. What you really need is security in layers. That means antivirus, sure, but also strong unique passwords. We'll get to that. Multi-factor authentication, keeping your software updated, using firewalls, and most importantly, a good dose of common sense and knowing what to look out for. Antivirus is just one piece of the puzzle, not the whole shebang. This is a common one, especially for browsing at home. If you use Ignito mode or private browsing mode, nobody can see what you're doing online, right? You're invincible. Sounds pretty cool, right? Like having a digital invisible cloak, but the reality is a lot less secret. Ignito mode mainly does one thing. It tells your browser not to save your browsing history, cookies, site data, or what you type into forms on your device. That's it. When you close that Ignito window, it's like 
the browsing session never happened, at least as far as your computer is concerned. But your internet service provider, they can still see what you're up to, the websites you visit, they can still log your IP address and track what you're doing on websites. If you're on a work or school network, the people in charge can still keep an eye on your traffic and search engines, even in Ignito, can still see what you're searching for if you're logged into an account. Think of it like this, Ignito mode cleans up your footprints inside your own house but it doesn't make you invincible when you're walking down the street. Believing Ignito mode makes you truly anonymous can give you a false sense of security. You might be less careful about the sites you hit up or the info you share thinking no one can trace you. That's a risky mistake. If you genuinely need more privacy and anonymity online, you should be looking at tools like VPNs which encrypts your internet traffic and hide your IP address or the Tor browser which bounces your traffic through a bunch of servers to hide where it's coming from. Ignito mode is handy for things like shopping for surprise gifts without leaving clues for family on a shared computer or logging into your email on a public machine without saving your details. But for real, anonymity against border track tracking it doesn't quite cut it for it now let's talk password so many people think uh, creating super complicated password is too much work and as long as i change them pretty often i'm okay or maybe i'll just use a slightly different version of the same strong password for everything look passwords are the keys to your entire digital life and yeah manually creating and remembering strong unique password for every single account is a pain but underestimating their importance or using weak strategies is a huge security gamble. The simple truth is, password managers are the safest and easiest way to handle this. They create and store incredibly complex unique passwords for all your accounts. You just need to remember one thing, strong a strong master password. And if you're worried about putting all your eggs in one basket, reputable password managers use every duty encryption and often have a zero knowledge setup, meaning even the company can't see your stored password. So why isn't just changing passwords regularly good enough, especially if they aren't strong and unique to begin with? Because if a password is weak, like password 1 to 3, or it's been exposed in a data breach somewhere, changing it to another weak or similar one doesn't really help. Cyber criminals have tools that can crack simple passwords in seconds and if you reuse passwords, a breach on one unimportant looking site can suddenly give attackers access to your email, your bank, your social media, you name it. Stolen or compromised credentials are a top cause of data breaches. In fact, studies show a high percentage of users reuse passwords across accounts. One recent statistic indicates 44% of users recycle passwords between personal and business accounts. That's like handling attackers a master key. The modern answer isn't just a strong password, it's a unique complex password for every single account, ideally made and stored by a trusted password manager and then backed up with multi-factor authentication wherever you can use it. Multi-factor authentication adds another security step like a code from your phone on top of your password it's not about making passwords less important it's about using the right tools and habits to make them super strong and easy to manage so this mate is a really damaging one inside companies cyber security oh that's IT's job they deal with all the tech stuff sure the IT department has a massive role in setting up and managing the technical side of security no doubt about it but thinking cyber security is only their problem that's a recipe for disaster the reality is cybersecurity is a team sport every single person in the company from the ceo down to the newest intern plays a part in protecting the company's data and systems why because one of the biggest weak spots in any organization isn't a piece of software or hardware it's us the people human error is a leading cause of data breaches it could be an employee clicking a phishing link, using a weak password, accidentally sending sensitive info to the wrong person or losing a company's phone or laptop. About three or four chief information security officers say human error is, the, is their biggest security risk. Attackers know this. They often go after employees with social engineering tricks because it's usually easier to fool a person than to break through complex tech defenses. A company can have the best firewalls detection 
systems and all the fancy security tools in the world but if an employee accidentally gives away their login details all those defenses can be bypassed that's why regular cybersecurity awareness training for everyone is so vital employees need to understand the threats know how to spot suspicious activity and be clear on how to report any problems companies that invest in this kind of training usually have fewer security incidents caused by employee mistakes so the truth isn't that IT handles everything, it's that a security aware culture where everyone gets their role is the best defense you can ever have. Okay, so now we've talked about how important multi-factor authentication is, but there's a sneaky myth that can pop up here too. Like I've switched on my multi-factor authentication, so my accounts are now totally unbreakable. Multi-factor authentication is in no question one of the best security moves you can make it seriously beefs up your defenses by asking for that extra bit of proof to be sure it's really you however it's not some magical invincible shield while multi-factor authentication makes it way harder for attackers to get in where they shouldn't determined ones can still find ways around it especially with clever social engineering uh, for instance attackers might try multi-factor authentication fatigue attacks they are just spam you with push notifications to your authenticator app hoping you'll accidentally approve one just to make them stop or they might set up super convincing fake login pages that trick you into typing in not just your password but your multi-factor authentication codes there are even ways they try to intercept multi-factor authentication codes themselves or take advantage of weaknesses in how multi-factor authentication is set up or how you recover your account the main point here isn't to ditch multi-factor authentication, absolutely not. It's still super important, but you need to understand it has limits and not get lazy about this because you've just enabled it. Security is all about layers. Multi-factor authentication is a very strong layer, but it needs to be part of your, your bigger security plan that includes good password habits, watching out for phishing and social engineering keeping up software up to date and just generally understanding that no single thing offers 100% protection. As our identities become the new security parameter, every part of authentication including how we had devices and reset passwords need a closer look. Finally, let's tackle a feeling more than a specific tech belief. Cyber security just seems so difficult. All these rules, tools and constant threats it's just overwhelming, so why even bother trying to keep up? It's easy to feel that way. The cybersecurity world can seem really complex when new threats and confusing tech talk popping up all the time. But giving in to that feeling and just throwing your hands up is exactly what the bad guys want. The truth is, while the field itself is complex, taking big steps to improve your own cybersecurity or even your small business's cybersecurity doesn't mean you need to become a tech genius. A lot of the best ways to protect yourself are surprisingly simple and things anyone can do. So one, use a password manager like we said. This automates making and storing strong unique passwords easier. You remember your own master password and this does the heavy lifting. Two, turn on multi-factor authentication wherever it's offered, enable it. It's usually just a quick flick or a switch of a switch in your account setting. Three, keep your software up to date, set your devices and apps to update automatically. These updates often fix critical security loopholes. Be skeptical of unexpected messages. Think before you click links or download files in emails, texts or social media messages, especially if they, if they seem urgent or too good to be true. This is your first line of defense against phishing. Back up your data regularly, back up your important information to, and files to an external drive or a secure cloud services. This protects you if ransomware eats or your device just gives up the ghost. So as an individual, you do not need to understand the nuts and bolts of malware or the global cybercrime economy to do these basic but really effective things. It's about building good digital habits, just like locking your doors at night or looking both ways before you cross the street. There are a ton of free resources, guides and user-friendly security tools out there. The learning curve might feel a bit steep at first, but the peace of mind and real protection you get are totally worth it. Don't let how complicated it seems stop you from taking action. Start with the basics and build from there. 
So we've busted some pretty big cyber security myths today and hopefully you're feeling a bit more clued up and empowered. Protecting yourself online isn't about being scared, it's about being aware and taking sensible practical steps. If you found this useful, please give this video a thumbs up. It's genuinely help us reach more people who need to hear the streets. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, follow us and the little notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos where we'll keep exploring how to stay safe out there. We really want to hear from you. Which of these myths did you used to believe or are there other cybersecurity misunderstandings you would like us to look into in other videos? Drop a comment below, share your experience and questions and help us and every other person learn and get more secure. We would like to remind you that the digital world is always changing and so are the threats that come with it. The average cost of a data bridge hit a record $4.88 million in 2024, which was a 10% jump from the year before, showing just how much these incidents are costing. And don't forget, human error plays a part in a massive number of these breaches. So figures say as high as 74% to 95% that this means that your knowledge and how careful you are are your best weapons. Believing the meat we've tackled today can leave you wide open to attack but by understanding what's really going on with these threats and by adopting good security habits you can seriously lower your risk of becoming a victim. Thank you for joining us on this meat busting adventure. Stay informed, stay vigilant and take control of your digital safety. We'll see you on the next one.